Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel Science Snake, where we analyze science concepts and learn quick ways to solve science problems. Today we're looking at chemistry, Lewis dot structures. Here is some background information on Lewis dot structures. Gilbert Lewis Newton was a physical chemist that introduced the visual in 1916 that demonstrated how electrons are shared and arranged around an atom. These visuals are called electron dot structures, or commonly known as Lewis dot structures. They help make a prediction about the geometry of a molecule. However, there are some limitations and exceptions to the rules that we will look at later in this video. Key terms. These are key terms we need to know in order to draw Lewis dot structures. Number one, valence electrons. Electrons found in the outermost shell of an atom, as seen in the picture on the right. We need to find the total number of valence electrons an element or compound has before drawing. Number two, octet rule. Lewis dot structures follow the octet rule, which means all atoms want eight valence electrons in order to be stable. A single line is drawn to represent two electrons. Double lines represent double bonds and triple lines represent triple bonds. Side note, the more bonds you have, the stronger the pull between the two atoms and the shorter the bond length as seen in the lines. One last thing you need before drawing Lewis dot structures is the periodic table. Period numbers are shown in rows across the periodic table and group numbers are the columns going up and down. As you read the periodic table from left to right, electronegativity and ionization increases. As you move from the bottom to the top, they also increase. Drawing Lewis dot structures. There are six steps to drawing. Let's go ahead and begin. For our first example, we have N2, which is a diatomic molecule, meaning it is composed of two of the same atoms. Here we have two nitrogens. Step 1. Count the total number of valence electrons. An easy way to count the total number of valence electrons is looking at the periodic table. Underneath the group number is a Roman numeral followed by the letter A. We can see nitrogen has a Roman numeral of 5 in 5A, so that means that entire column has 5 valence electrons. Because we have two nitrogens, we need to write N equals 2 times 5 valence electrons, which equals 10 valence electrons in total. Step 2. Place the atom with the lowest subscript number in the center and draw single bonds from the central atom to the other atoms. Note, if carbon is present, carbon is always the central atom. We have a subscript of 2 on nitrogen, so we're going to place a single line between the two nitrogens. Reminder that a single line represents 2 valence electrons. However, we need 10 valence electrons that we calculated from step 1, so let's move on to step 3. Step 3. Add an electron on each corner of the element before pairing. Note, compounds may or may not have electrons around the central atom. We already have two valence electrons in that single line. Let's place the valence electrons around each side going clockwise before pairing. So we have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 valence electrons around N2. Let's move on to the next step which is important when drawing Lewis dot structures. Step 4. For compounds, check that each element satisfies the octet rule. 
The nitrogen on the right has seven valence electrons. The nitrogen on the left only has five. Both do not satisfy the octet rule because we need each element to have eight valence electrons around it in order to be stable. So how do we draw the correct Lewis dot structure for N2? Step five, add double or triple bonds to the central atom until the octet rule is satisfied. I'm going to move that pair of electrons to the middle and draw one more line to create a double bond. We can count again to see if we have eight electrons around each element in this compound. The nitrogen on the right has seven valence electrons and the nitrogen on the left also has seven. So we need to try again. I'm going to move that pair of electrons to the middle and create a triple bond. We now have nine valence electrons on the right and seven valence electrons on the left. So we need to try again one more time. Keep in mind, this is a process that may take multiple tries until you get the correct Lewis dot structure. So don't give up. The last and final step, step six. Rearrange electrons around atoms if needed. I'm going to move the electrons around, and now I get eight valence electrons on both nitrogens, making this the correct Lewis dot structure for N2. Now it's your turn. Draw the correct Lewis dot structure for Cl2 following the six steps we learned. What are the six steps we learned, you may ask? Number one, count the total number of valence electrons. Number two, place the atom with the lowest subscript number in the center and draw single bonds from the central atom to other atoms. Note, if carbon is present, carbon is always the central atom. Number three, add an electron on each corner of the element before pairing. Compounds may or may not have electrons around the central atom. Number four, compounds. Check that each element satisfies the octet rule in a compound. Number five, add double or triple bonds to the central atom until the octet rule is satisfied. And lastly, number six, rearrange electrons around atoms if needed. An easy way to count the total number of valence electrons is looking at the periodic table. Underneath the group number is a Roman numeral followed by the letter A. The Roman numeral will tell you the number of valence electrons. Feel free to pause the video here while you draw your Lewis dot structure for Cl2. This is the correct Lewis dot structure for Cl2. If you didn't get the correct answer, don't worry, it just means you need more practice. Now let's take a look at some exceptions to the rules when drawing Lewis dot structures. Let's use the six steps we learned when drawing Lewis dot structures for the example CH4. Step 1. Count the total number of valence electrons by looking at the periodic table. Carbon has four valence electrons and hydrogen has one. However, we have four hydrogens in CH4, so we have to multiply one valence electron times four. In total, we have eight valence electrons for CH4. Step two, place the atom with the lowest subscript number in the center and draw single bonds from the central atom to other atoms. If carbon is present, carbon is always the central atom. Step three, add an electron on each corner of the element before pairing. Note, compounds may or may not have electrons around the central atom. We counted eight valence electrons in total for CH4, so let's count how many we have so far and see if this compound needs more electrons. Each line represents two electrons, so we have two electrons in the first CH bond, four, six, and eight valence electrons for CH4. Carbon already has eight valence electrons around it, satisfying the octet rule. But how can all the hydrogens satisfy the octet rule if we already have the correct total number of eight valence electrons in CH4? The answer is that hydrogen is an exception to the octet rule. If you look at the periodic table, hydrogen only needs one valence electron, but it is stable with two valence electrons, breaking the octet rule. Therefore, 
Hydrogen is the exception because it holds a max of two valence electrons. Step four out of six is our last step in this case. For compounds, check that each element satisfies the octet rule. This is the correct Lewis dot structure for CH3. Here is a second example, HCl. Use the periodic table to count the total number of valence electrons. Hydrogen has one valence electron. Chlorine should say seven valence electrons times one chlorine equals seven. The total for the compound is eight valence electrons. Next, we draw a line between hydrogen and chlorine. Now we can draw dots representing electrons going clockwise. So we have two in the middle, followed by three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight valence electrons around this compound. Chlorine has five valence electrons, and so does hydrogen, which does not satisfy the octet rule, so we need to rearrange the electrons. We can move all the electrons around chlorine. Chlorine satisfies the octet rule now with eight valence electrons around it, and hydrogen with two valence electrons, making it stable. This is the correct Lewis dot structure for HCl. You can apply the steps learned in this video for other Lewis dot structure problems you were assigned for homework or to study for an exam. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.